I thought once how Theocritus had sung of the sweet years, the dear and wished for years, who each one in a gracious hand appears to bear a gift for mortals, old or young. And as I mused it in his antique tongue, I saw in gradual vision through my tears the sweet, sad years, the melancholy years, those of my own life, who by turns had flung a shadow across me. Straightway I was where, so weeping, our mystic shape did move behind me and drew me backward by the hair. And the voice said in mastery while I strove, Guess now who holds thee. Death, I said, but there the silver answer rang, not death, but love. But only three in all God's universe have heard this word thou hast said, himself beside thee speaking and me listening, and replied one of us, that was God, and laid the curse so darkly on my eyelids as to immerse my sight from seeing me, that if I had died, the death weights placed there would have signified less absolute exclusion. Nay, is worse from God than from all others, O oh my friend. Men could not part us with their worldly jars, nor the seas change us, nor the tempest bend. Our hands would touch for all the mountain vase, and heaven being rolled between us at the end, we should but vow the faster for the stars. I lift my heavy heart up solemnly, as once Electra her sepulchral urn, and looking in thine eyes, I overturn the ashes at thy feet. Behold and see what a great heap of grief lay hid in me, and how the red wild sparkles dimly burn through the ashen grayness. If thy foot in scorn could tread them out to darkness utterly, it might be well, perhaps. But if instead thou wait beside me for the wind to blow the gray dust up, those laurels on thine head, O oh my beloved, will not shield thee so, that none of all the fires shall scorch and shred the hair beneath. Stand farther off, then. Go. Go from me. Yet I feel I shall stand henceforward in thy shadow. Never more alone upon the threshold of my door of individual life, I shall command the uses of my soul. Now lift my hand serenely in the sunshine as before. Without the sense of that which I forbore, thy touch upon the palm. The widest land doom takes to part us, leaves thy heart in mine with pulses that beat double. What I do and what I dream include thee, as the wine must taste of its own grapes. And when I sue God for myself, he hears that name of thine and sees within my eyes the tears of two. The face of all the world has changed, I think, since first I heard the footsteps of thy soul move still, oh still beside me, as they stole between me and the dreadful outer brink of obvious death, where I, who thought to sink, was caught up into love and taught the whole of life in a new rhythm. The cup of dole God gave for baptism, I am fain to drink and praise its sweetness, sweet with thee and near. The names of country, heaven, are changed away for where thou art, or shall be there or here. And this, this lute and song, loved yesterday the singing angels know, are only dear, because thy name moves right in what they say. What can I give thee back, O liberal and princely giver? who hast brought the gold and purple of thine heart, unstained, untold, and laid them on the outside of the wall for such as I to take or leave with all in unexpected largesse. Am I cold and grateful that for these most manifold high gifts I render nothing back at all? Not so, not cold, but very poor instead. Ask God who knows. For frequent tears have run the colors from my life, and left so dead and pale a stuff, it were not fitly done to give the same as pillow to thy head. Go, Father, let it serve to trample on. Yet love, mere love, is beautiful indeed, and worthy of acceptation. Fire is bright, let temple burn or flax, and equal light leaps in the flame from cedar plank or weed, and love is fire, 
And when I say it need, I love thee. Ma, I love thee. In thy sight I stand transfigured, glorified aright with conscience of the new rays that proceed out of my face toward thine. There's nothing low in love when love the lowest. Meanest creatures who love God, God accepts while loving so. And what I feel across the inferior features of what I am, that flash itself in show, how that great work of love enhances nature's. If thou must love me, let it be for naught except for love's sake only. Do not say I love her for her smile, her look, her way of speaking gently, for a trick of thought that falls in well with mine, and certes brought a sense of pleasant ease on such a day. For these things in themselves, beloved, may be changed or changed for thee, and love so wrought may be unwrought so. Neither love me, for thine own dear pities wiping my cheeks dry, a creature might forget to weep who bore thy comfort long, and lose thy love thereby. But love me for love's sake, that evermore thou mayst love on through love's eternity. And yet, because thou overcomest so, because thou art more noble and like a king, thou canst prevail against my fears and fling thy purple round me, till my heart shall grow too close against thine heart henceforth to know how it shook when alone. Thy conquering may prove as lordly and complete a thing in lifting upward as in crushing low, and as a vanquished soldier yields his sword to one who lifts him from the bloody earth, even so, beloved, I at last record, here ends my strife. If thou invite me forth, I rise above abasement at the word. Make thy love larger to enlarge my worth. I never gave a lock of hair away to a man, dearest, except this to thee, which now upon my fingers thoughtfully I wring out to the full brown length and say, Take it. My day of youth went yesterday. My hair no longer bounds to my foot's plea, nor plant I it from rose or myrtle tree as girls do any more. It only may now shade on two pale cheeks the mark of tears, taught drooping from the head that hangs aside through sorrow's trick. I thought the funeral shears would take this first, but love is justified. Take it thou, finding pure from all those years the kiss my mother left here when she died. Beloved, my beloved, when I think that thou wast in the world a year ago, what time I sat alone here in the snow and saw no footprint, heard the silence sink no moment at thy voice, that link by link went counting all my chains, as if that so they never would fall off at any blow struck by thy possible hand. Why, thus I drink of life's great cup of wonder, wonderful. Never to feel thee thrill the day or night with personal act or speech, nor ever cull some prescience of thee with the blossoms white thou sowest growing. Atheists are as dull, who cannot guess God's presence out of sight. <laughs>